as a designer, it's not about you or your portfolio. It's about the people that you're designing for and how your work just might help them live better lives. What do you think of when I say the word design? I'm talking about the design of digital experiences and specifically the design of systems that are so big that their scale can be hard to comprehend. I want to talk about the kind that you probably use every day and may not give much thought to. Designs that change all the time and that live inside your pocket. Consider the fact that Google processes over one billion search queries every day. That every minute, over a hundred hours of footage are uploaded to YouTube. And Facebook transmitting the photos, messages, and stories of over 1.23 billion people. That's almost half of the internet population and a sixth of humanity. What is really hard about designing at scale is this. It requires a combination of two things, audacity and humility. Audacity to believe that the thing that you're making is something that the entire world wants and needs. And humility to understand that as a designer, it's not about you or your portfolio. It's about the people that you're designing for and how your work just might help them live better lives. Here's a really good example of how a very tiny design element can make a big impact. The designer who led this project estimates that he spent over 280 hours redesigning this button over the course of months. When you're designing at scale, there's no such thing as a small detail. This innocent little button is seen on average 22 billion times a day and on over 7.5 million websites. It's one of the single most viewed design elements ever created. Now, that's a lot of pressure for a little button and the designer behind it. But with these kinds of products, you need to get even the tiny things right. Is how to design with data. Now, when you're working on products like this, you have incredible amounts of information about how people are using your product that you can then use to influence your design decisions. Of course, we use a lot of data to inform our decisions, but we also rely very heavily on iteration, research, testing, intuition, human empathy. It's both art and science. Now, sometimes the designers who work on these products are called data-driven. The fact is, it would be irresponsible of us not to rigorously test our designs when so many people are counting on us to get it right. But data analytics will never be a substitute for design intuition. Data can help you make a good design great, but it will never make a bad design good. People can become very efficient at using bad design. And so even if the change is good for them in the long run, it's still incredibly frustrating when it happens. And this is particularly true with user-generated content platforms, because people can rightfully claim a sense of ownership. We know that we have to be careful about paying attention to the details. We have to be cognizant about how we use data in our design process. And we have to introduce change very, very carefully. Now, when you set a goal to design for the entire human race, you have to understand who you are designing for. What if your country had no free press? What would these products start to mean to you? This is what Google, YouTube, and Facebook look like to most of the world, and it's what they'll look like to most of the next five billion people to come online. What does it mean to design at a global scale? But if you want to design for the whole world, you have to design for where people are and not where you are. Everything that I've designed in my career is pretty much gone, and everything that I will design will fade away. But here's what remains. The never-ending thrill of being a part of something that is so big you can hardly get your head around it. And the promise that it just might change the world.